What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to the Welsh Way here with Apple Swiss Town. So, end of season update has arrived, as you said a little bit of the league review, we did end up going on to win the league. Sousa ended up scoring 31 goals, which was actually one shy of the record that Win James set, which was 32 league goals in a season. But when you see how many games he actually played in the league, you'll realise that actually uh, that they had a better goals to games play ratio than probably anyone ever at this club. So we'll go into the league and we'll look at that and then we'll, you know, talk about how the league's progressed, how the team's progressed in terms of, you know, comparison to Europe. But for now, let's go here. So league table, this is what we did. We ended up uh, losing one game and drawing four, but winning the rest. 102 goals scored, 13 goals conceded, 85 points compared to last season. Uh, wasn't as good as you see. We drew an extra game and uh, scored a few less, conceded a few more. Uh, Lost the game very early on, which was a massive shame. I really feel that we should be having an undefeated season, and maybe even just a 100% season. Uh, but for some reason, we're just not able to get there for whatever sort of event. Actually, what I want to do is I want to go through the Cups as well instead. So, Welsh Cup, we actually lost. We actually lost the Welsh Cup to TNS on the final. And if you look at the match stats, I mean, it's just complete utter BS and how we lost. But, you know, whatever. I don't really care that we lost this tournament. Um, I, I don't really mind. I did play a full team, as you see, a complete full team. I only, only changed to what I would consider my strongest starting 11 was that Lloyd play, 15-year-old goalkeeper. He came into the team. I uh, feel he's got a very good future here. I'm still going to look for a new goalkeeper. I mean, I still want a better goalkeeper for now. But this guy's going to be playing in the league games and the cup games from now on. So, um, I was playing him in these games. and he, I, I don't blame him for the goal conceded. I mean, there was only one shot on target. Uh, I'm not even sure if that was a clear opportunity or not um it was so you know it clearly it, it was going to be difficult for him to save anyway he had a good performance in comparison to the guys going forward but it was just strange that we lost this game i honestly I don't know how we lost it 20 shots nine on target we should be getting a goal at least and the most premier league cup we did win that we beat tns there but tns a little bit of a difficult team to beat this season i think we lost once and drawn drew once to them in the league and then we lost in the cup here so overall out of about Six meetings, we didn't beat them on three occasions, so... Bit of an awkward season with us and TNS, but it, real, real strange. I think they had a very good player this year. Um, I think it was on loan, actually, from someone. I uh, don't remember his name. It should be a very good average match rating or a lot of goals scored. Brad Torres is one of them. I mean, decent player overall. American as well. Where did he come from? Stoke. So, you know, not a bad player. I think they're strengthening, trying to pick up their game. As you see, they've got a few decent players, a former player of us, Ashley Richards. But overall, they've got some, you know, decent players, capable players in their team. Which means hopefully they'll push on in Europe next season, as well as our stead, Jim Hump's uh, husband as well, who overall isn't a bad player either, you know. He's got some decent stats on him. But that's, that's what happened in the league. We ended up winning it. Uh, TNS getting Europe yet again, and so are Bala and Banger, I believe. They are, which you could see the Bangor City goal in there, because they were relegated, I believe, weren't they? Um, 11th is the relegation zone, is it not? I think this is their first season. Yeah, they got relegated, and it's the first year they were back in a division, uh, yeah, since two years ago. So the fact that they, they came back in, they were a bit of a shock at relegation anyway, but the fact that they've come back in and they've jumped straight into Europe, that's a very good thing. They've got a very big fan base, I believe, as well. So it's good to see that, you know, they've come back and they've jumped in well. And they have Paul Lintz as their manager. And in, not the best manager in the world. I mean, his record, uh, speaks for itself, is not exactly the greatest manager in real life. In the game, he, he's bounced around to a lot of places. Um, Middlesbrough, Derby, Shamrock, Leighton Orient, Blackpool, Carlisle, Derry, and now he's a banger. So clearly struggles to really do have any consistency. But he came in and he did well here. So hopefully we'll have a good year for the sides in Europe, for the Welsh teams in Europe. Ballery yet again getting in there, which is good to see, consistency. But we'll have a look at the European reputation now. So the league itself has jumped up uh, to now 36th best league in the world, jumping up eight, six places. Which means we're now not too far off big, being a better reputation than League One. I think if we'd have beaten Chelsea, we probably would have gone to a two and a half star reputated league. But overall, it's, you know, still progression. We're still jumping up year by year. And hopefully we'll, we'll be breaking into that two and a half star very soon because then we'll be one of the more, you know, elite teams. Hopefully we can get into that top 30, top 25. Next year, really, I'll probably be aiming for, you know, top, you know, two and a half star reputation. That'll be a good year for us uh, if we can get the league up to there. How the Cups doing as well? I never really look at the Cups. Um, uh, where are we? I, I don't actually have a clue where we are in these leagues. 
Uh, there's one of them. There is the Welsh Cup, and I imagine it was Premier League Cup. There you go, it's down there. So we're about the same reputation as the FA Trophy. Oh, dearie me, or the Scottish League Challenge Cup, we're just above that. So it's still not really meaning anything to win them leagues, which is why I'm not too disappointed that we lost them. You know, it doesn't mean anything to anyone. The clubs, reputation-wise, we're not anywhere in reputation. Financial-wise, we're not anywhere in finances. Coefficient points-wise, though, we are now a top 50 club. We are now ranked 43rd in Europe for teams, which is fantastic. We're just behind Frankfurt, uh, Spartak Moscow, Moscow, sorry, Shakhtar Donetsk, Galatasaray, above the likes of Dynamo Kiev, Feyenoord, Reading, Napoli, Udinese, Besiktas, the team that beat us two years ago, or last year really, coming up to two years ago. So we're now a very good team in Europe. Um, still not sure where that would leave us in the you know group stage rankings. We have, how many points is it now? 44 overall, I believe. So when we go into next season, we should have 44. I think that's how it works, or something like that. So hopefully we'll be in the third pot, third seed, which will make it, make it a little bit easier for us to get an easier tie and maybe an easier progression through. I would really love to get to the Champions League knockout because we've not been there for two years now and I feel that's something that needs to be getting, we need to be getting consistent, consistently from this point on. Uh, nationwide though, uh, the nation coefficients has to make a difference. So qualification places, we have jumped up yet again. We are now the 17th ranked team, uh, well, country in Europe. Which means we have one team in the second qualifying round, so we're still going to come in there. But we have now got a team entering the third qualifying round. I'm actually looking at the wrong one. There you go. Third qualifying round of the Europa League, which will be TNS. And we have two teams entering the second qualifying round, which will be Bala and Banger. Which means them te their teams are going to be getting a lot more money once they get eliminated. I don't think... I think TNS maybe reached their third qualifying round once. I think it was a few years back when we had our good year in Europe as well. I think when we got to the quarterfinals, they did well in Europe. I think something like that. But it'd be good for them to get there anyway. And it also means that maybe another good year in Europe for us. And we could maybe even be qualifying a little bit later in the competition. Maybe we, we could have two teams entering the competition of the Champions League. That would be fantastic for the league. And overall just help us, you know, one less space to have to qualify. <laughs> which would be ideal. But... Only time will tell with that one, but I'd, love, I'd really love another good year in Europe just so we can maybe get some teams entering through the playoffs. Hopefully we can get to a stage where teams aren't in the group stages. I mean, we're not too far off, you know, being the same national reputation as the likes of, you know, Romania, Israel, Ukraine. I'd love to really be battling with these guys up here, these countries, because they have, they have some very decent teams in them. You know, Scotland progressed decently now. They've got a team in the Champions League group stage. Turkey are a decent footballing country. Of course, we lost to Besiktas, so that means something. They clearly are a good footballing team. I mean, good footballing nation and can offer some really good club teams as well, considering Besiktas are probably one of these lot, you know, entering in the earlier stages of the Europa League. But that's what we're doing there. It's good to see that we are ranked as high as we are in the qualification places. And I I do predict in a year or two, we should be having maybe two teams in entering the Champions League. I'm not sure how it works because we're such a small league. We may only have a one maximum. It's a bit like uh, Luxembourg, not Luxembourg, uh, Liechtenstein can only ever have one team in the Europa League or one team entering the competition. So I imagine that they would always be limited to like a set thing here. But I, I, hopefully we can have two teams in the Champions League. Maybe even get to a stage where we can have three. I don't know. Hopefully we'll win the Champions League before then. Fingers crossed, you know. Touch wood. Uh, but let's look at... Uh, what should we look at now? We'll look at some player stats and uh, player awards from the league. So, average match ratings. We smashed that, dominated that. Sousa was top goal scorer in the league. 31 goals. We'll have a look at how many games he played. There is, look, there is a quick look at his stats. Someone asked to do that a few episodes back in the comments that they had, you know, I've, I've got a few pre-recorded, so this is the earliest I can do it, but Sousa is an amazing player, really is, and I, I do predict he'll be a, a striker that will be here when we get European glory, if it's in the next four, five, six years, you know, because I don't imagine he'll be playing until he's 40, but really an incredible player and can tear this division apart with, really, he's 13 out of 13 last year and now 31 out of 20 this year, including nine assists as well, he's He's way too good for this league. And even 18 in Europe, which included five against Real Madrid. So it's clearly good enough to play in these European competitions. We just need to get the team around him to the same strength and the same ability. Terry Jenkins got 14 assists as well. He didn't play in every game either. So he actually improved from last year in terms of assists and played seven less games. So had a good year for him. Played a match with Sousa was up there. Uh, clean sheets, Ed Hartnell got 15 
And as you can see, he's at a different club. I decided to sell Ed Hartnell to Dundee. I want to bring in a new keeper. He actually got capped for Wales as well. But I wanted to bring in a new keeper. I thought Lloyd is the future of the goalkeeping, as in the youngster that I want to push through in the league. And I do want to bring in another goalkeeper who will um, actually come in now and be good enough now to play in the Champions League. So I didn't feel Ed Hartnell or, um, oh, what's his name, Hanford are going to be good enough for that. So I decided I, w I wanted to sell both of them. Ed Hartnell was his first guy I decided to sell. He had a lot of interest from him a lot of Scottish and English teams. And so 725k was the highest offer I had come in. I thought, well, that's a very good m amount of money. I don't think he'll ever be a an incredible player. I mean, he'll be a decent player, but I don't think he'll ever be an incredible player. He's in the Dundee reserves now, but got 15, 15 clean sheets this year out of 22 games. Not as good as last year, I don't think. Uh, actually, no, I think he's got a little bit of ratio last year. But uh, still good... A good year for him, and it will be his last year for us as well. So let's go into the uh, team. I, I want to look at the team actually. How's salary per annum doing? 5.86 million we spend on players. Jesus, that is so much money when we compare it to the likes of Cambrian or Afanlido or Airbus. <laughs> such, there's such a small wage budget. But it's good to see as well the top four teams spending on wages end up getting top four. It means that their investment and their you know their uh, the money they're spending is actually being reflected by what they do on the pitch. Uh, how many how many people are we getting in the stadium now as well? 842. We're now the highest average attendance people in the league. Still nowhere near enough to fill the stadium. Still nowhere near enough to really say to the board, hey, you know, we need to improve and expand our stadium, which I don't think they'll still do. I mean, I've just spent money on improving our youth and training facilities again, so we only have six million in the balance. But if I were to ask, I'm sure that they would say, in, you know, no. Uh, capitalize on the excess I intend to bring. See, they just they say lack of funding, but I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if I have a lot more money left in the you know in the in the bank at the end of the next season, I'll do it again and see if they'll actually do it this time. But you know, whatever. So player them up for wars. We ended up picking it up three times: Sousa twice and Viv Gunter on one of the occasions. Player of the year ended up going to Victor Sousa, as you probably expect. Such a good average match rating. Really good amount of uh you know goals to games play record and probably had one of the highest voting rates in the league i just saw i'm just looking through here apart from apart from greg drapper back there with 39 goals he's got 40 or 39 points or he's got 41 points so clearly he was the majority of votes going his way tim the season we had all but three players in there ed hartnell scott drake carl ford uh, Fernandez, Jenkins, Hunter, O'Connor and Sousa, so almost a clean sweep there. Hopefully we'll get that one year. Hopefully every player in the Sun Eleven will be a one for uh, one of our players. Oh, that's all seasons. Oh, it's good to see that in all seasons Sousa is already in there and it's, this league has been going for probably what twelve years now, thirteen years, and he's only been here for two years. Or well, one and a half years really. Top goal scorer Sousa, you already know about that. Young player of the year went to Carl Ford, 20 years of age, around the majority of the season, now 22. Had a good year coming in from Motherwell, uh, including in Europe as well. He had a pretty decent year, so I think he'll be a good player for us. I'm still looking to try and strengthen the centre-back area, and he'd be the guy that would leave if we did get a good centre-back. But um, I'm overall pleased and you know happy with the kind of player we have there. Manager of the Month award, we picked it up on five occasions, including, I believe, Manager of the Year. I believe I got that. Yes, I did. I got it yet again. Uh, it seems like anyone who wins the league gets this competition, gets this award, and I ended up getting it this year. Although I would, you know, have a shout for an argument that maybe Paul Lintz could have got it, although he wasn't here for long. Uh, Hill went to Bristol City. But those are the awards, and then this is the team. Uh, actually, I feel, I've got any transfers to talk about. I have got a few transfers to talk about. Uh, you know what, I'm going to talk about them now. So we have Victor Costa, goalkeeper, coming in. I said I want to find a keeper. I, I wasn't too sure if I was going to mention this episode, but you know what? Screw it. I'm going to mention it now. Victor Costa, 25 years of age, from Benfica yet again. Another player we're getting from Portugal, another Portuguese player, but it's the only place I can seem to find decent regents from and decent players that are willing to join our team. So he's coming in, 25 years of age, overall a really good goalkeeper in comparison to anything we can offer here. Really, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can offer to the team, and I do feel he'll be a... a, a I'll keep it for the next few years. Maybe until Lloyd develops, but I don't know. But zero pounds paid. I got him on a pre-contract deal. And I think he's going to be on around 
9k, 8k a week, something like that. So it'd be on a decent wage, but not the highest. Uh, Nathan Green is leaving. He's on his way to Everton. He's been wanting to leave the club now for a few months. Uh, he just doesn't play enough league games to meet his satisfaction. So he'll be off to Everton of the Championship. And I imagine he'll do decently well there. I mean, he should get in a team, maybe. I don't know. It depends on how good the rest of their players are. But, you know, he may challenge there. At least he's actually making, I'd probably say, a step up in reputation rankings. Uh, Scott Rees is on his way to Burnley. I already mentioned that before. Hanford, I've tried getting rid of him, but only loan deals have come in so far. And Terry Jenkins is wanted by a few people, but I don't really want to sell that guy yet. So this is the team looking at next season. I still really want to bring in a left mid, but I can't find any decent ones out there. I will continue to look, but it's real, real difficult to find anyone in that position for some reason. Uh, well, I, I'll go through the team now because, like I said, someone wants to look at all the all the players and how they've developed. So I'm just going to flick through. Is Lloyd? Uh, here's McNaughton, young centre back. Dave O'Connor, our striker. Victor Sousa, our other striker. Neil Taylor, who is actually leaving this season, so there won't be too much point showing him. Here is Torre, who is a very good player. Colin Wilkins, a youngster, striker, played a few times this season. Scored 11 goals actually in the league. Oh no, seven goals in the league, sorry, 11 in all competitions. Luke Allen, centre mid, that comes in every now and again to play the game. I think he's about a fifth, sixth choice. Mitchell Armstrong, back up right mid now. Here's Stuart Banningham, also leaving at the end of this season. Steve Bowen, who is our, I believe, third or fourth choice centre mid now. He's pushed himself up in the rankings. George Crompton, who is our backup left mid. Hopefully I can get someone new in, like I say, and then that position will go to Hunter. He'll be our third choice left mid. Ben Davis, left back, uh, hopefully he'll last for another year without his stats declining too much. He'll be our left back. Carwin Drake now being forced to a backup role. 31 caps for Wales though and still captain here, so he'll still have a future here, but how, many, how often he plays I don't know. Scott Drake uh, still has a future as well, like I say, um, it depends on how Davis' stats react, but Davis can still play that left back role. He's not got the best stats in the world going forward, which I do like my... Fullbacks have decent stats like crossing and dribbling, but still overall not a bad player at caps for Wales as well. Will Evans this season has been destroyed with injuries, and I think that's affected his stats as well. I actually don't know how it's done too much. It's affected his physicals a lot. But uh, he's still got a place here at the side. He's still our probably third or fourth choice, third or fourth choice striker at the team. Here's Jose Miguel Fernandez. A really good right back for us. Carl Ford stats here. We've already looked at Nathan Green on his way out. Viv Gunter now sort of fading in the team as well, dropping down the ranking order. Uh, seven caps for Wales. He still gets in the Welsh squad, but I don't really play him a lot. Here's Ben Hamford. I don't think he'll be here too long anyway. I don't think he'll be here much longer. Dylan Hicks, who is also leaving at the end of the season, spent a long time at the club now, but and actually played ten games this season, which is equaling his highest ever games played in the league for us. But he was just here as a backup centre back, and I decided you know it's best for him to leave now. We should kill Hunter. Still good stats, but I feel we can get better if I can find better. Obviously, I know there's better out there. I just need to find someone willing to join the side on a decent wage. Terry Jenkins, first choice right mid. I think he's been breaking through a Wales as well. I think he's been playing a few games there this year. I'm not too sure. Daniel Jose, hopefully he'll have a good year next year. Struggled this year to find much former consistency for us, but I'm sure next year he'll. Really cemented to the team. Hopefully he can speak a little bit of English now as well. No, not yet, but hopefully when he does, that will just help him, you know, ease into the team a little bit more. Still plays for Portugal's under 21s as well. I don't know how. He's 22, but he still does. Di Lewis, 26 years of age. Uh, still got some good stats, but I am sort of looking for a new centre mid as well to kind of replace him. He still plays well, but he gets injured quite a bit. He gets sent off quite a bit. I don't know why either he's not got great aggression. I mean, his tackling's not the best either, but it's not the worst. So I don't know why that happens. Em Emery, I think that's how you say that guy's name. Emery Lewis, 17 years of age, really good potential, and has actually been playing quite a lot this season for us. On a bit of a goal drought, which is a shame, but I'm sure he'll be, you know, he'll score a goal sooner or later. And he's only been at the side for one year, and he's played quite a few games, so I think he's got a good future ahead of him. And then we are back at Lloyd. So that is the team just flicking through quickly there. Obviously, it was just, just it is just the first team that I flick through. Uh, a few people on the bench, a few people in the reserves I look at. Thomas Wallace, the record signing for the club. He went out on loan to MK Dons, but struggled while there. That's probably get best for me to keep him here. He'll be playing a few more games next season because I really want him to develop into, into a good player. So that, so that worst comes to worst, I can sell him on for a bit of profit. 
because a hundred thousand pounds is a lot of money for us to spend. And anyone in the under 19s? I don't think anyone really came for the youth uh, intake this season apart from Lloyd, which is why he's in the starting 11 and why he's played so many games for us so far. So I think this is going to be it for now. We're going to look at a few more things quickly though. Uh, anyone entered the legends list? I obviously don't know anymore. <laughs> so many people there now. In comparison to when I first joined, when it was just Gavin Allen and... Uh, actually, it might have just been Gavin Allen. I thought Barry Morgan was there, but I guess not. But that is it. Facilities-wise, we have great youth facilities, super training facilities. Uh, our youth, our stadium sponsorship ends soon, which means hopefully we'll bring in some uh, a new deal, a better deal, because I do believe we have a better deal. Affiliated club-wise, we've expanded here. We've got a few more people. We have, well, how many teams now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 teams, all bringing in around 40k, 30 to 40k, or 30 to 50k, I should really say, in terms of money, which is overall really beneficial to the team. It means we're just getting free income. And uh, I don't think much else. Sales. Um... We make a lot of money. Look at our profit loss that we're allowed to have a 4.22 million loss, and we're having a 30.29 million profit. Uh, does it? Can you find out how your shirt sales are going? I thought you could find who is the highest selling shirt guy thing. Um, merchandise is it? Where is merchandise? I can't find it. There it is. I can't see it. It, it tells you like a summary at some point, but we had a boost in I think shirt sales. Shirt shirt signing did we or something when Jose joined I don't remember I don't think I don't know I think we did at one point but I don't remember who it was I, I might just be talking about my ass I don't even remember, I don't even remember anymore uh, but I, the one thing I really wanted to look at quickly was who got the awards in the Welsh uh, Welsh people so oh wow Terry Jenkins got football of the year see I don't even I don't even get notifications about these things I'm, sub I'm subscribed to the awards but I don't sort of get these notifications but Terry Jenkins got football of the year for Wales that is an incredible achievement. 24 years of age. Only got five caps for Wales himself. If we compare that to the, maybe the likes of Jack Charles, 23 caps, and this guy, three caps. Aren't we? You know, surprising that these guys aren't getting into the team. Well, actually, not him. Or him. He played shocking in the average ratings. But it's good to see he's got recognised. But I don't even think he's in the starting eleven. They actually don't play right midfielders. They play right attacking mids. There he is. He's there. But that's a shock there. And who got young player of the year? Ah, Scott Drake came second, but he doesn't really played much in Europe. So I understand that, but wow, the first guy to win this award for us is Terry Jenkins. That's a bit of history there, the first time we've actually won this award. We came third with Gareth Bale back in 2022 when he was approaching the latter stages of, of his... Uh, I can't speak today, the latter stages of his career, but it's good to see a youngster in his prime winning that for us. So this will be for now, guys. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Next time I meet you back will be the Champions League live com. I mean the Champions League live com. Sorry, the Champions League group stage live com, where we'll go through all the qualifications and hopefully get ourselves a decent group this year. So until then, guys, peace out.